How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson back at it here with a cool new different kind of Max MSP video for you. Today I want to show you something I have been working on. You may be familiar with my Instagram page at Andrew's Art Project where I share a ton of audio reactive visuals that I design in Max MSP. It's a thing I've done for a long time and I love designing audio reactive visuals in Max. I think Max is one of the best languages for designing audio reactive visuals. But one issue I ran into early on in my career was I could not act like a real VJ. I could make a Max patch that is a visual and run that standalone Max patch. Um, but I had no way to fade between other visuals that I've created and like load them up in a queue and really just, you know, be a VJ. But I have fixed that problem. I have created for me and for you the first ever Max VJ Deck Pro application. This application will let you be a VJ with your own audio reactive Max patches. Let's just jump right into it. I'm gonna break it down real quick how it works and it should be pretty easy for you to get set up and start using on your own. So when you open the application, which I really, I should put a disclaimer right here, right now, this version right now only works on Mac computers. Sorry about that, Windows users. Also, when you are opening this application, make sure you do the right click open method to open the application. I am not an Apple developer yet. I don't have a license. Um, so if you just if you don't do that, it's going to ask for your permission with almost everything you do, including changing visuals, which would be really annoying. So make sure you right click open to open the application and it's not going to bother you about that beyond the initial loading up. So once you've done that, once you've got the app opened, this is what you're going to see. Just this little window with our master window, uh, jit.world window over here. There's this button down here uh, with an instructions, which is honestly, it's not that much right now. This is just to explain how to get started um, if you want to build your own audio reactive patch that works with this patch. And it's really easy. Just use jit.world, make sure you say at output texture one in jit.world and attach the texture output to a jit.gl siphon server object. I, that is all you need to do to get your audio reactive patches working with this audio uh, VJ deck. Um, however, if you're on my Patreon and that's how you found this and you've downloaded this application with the folder, then you'll see in the folder there is an audio reactive template max patch. You can just load that up and build from that and it has the features included in order to work with this VJ Max deck pro already so you don't have to worry about doing that. Any audio reactive visual that you design should be able to work now with this patch. Find the folder of audio reactive visuals and you just need to drag and drop that folder into the drop file object right here. And then you'll see it'll populate this U menu with all your audio reactive visuals that you have designed. Next step down here is the menu for our audio input driver. You just got to make sure you're selecting the correct audio input for your use case. I'm using black hole to do audio loopback through my computer. So I have a black hole selected here. If you don't see the option that you need in this menu, you can click this button to refresh it, but it should be there. If it's not there, there might be something else in your setup that is incorrect. If you've got that selected and you're all set, ready to go, that's perfect. Then all you got to do, click the microphone on. It will ask for permission. That is okay. And then you click this to turn the JIT.world rendering system on. And we are ready to go. So all you got to do now is in this menu, select your patch. And it's going to load from that menu down through this line into this spot. And you can see it here and you can see it there in the master window and it shows the file name which is pretty sick if you want to queue up a second visual over in this slot all you got to do is click on a switch you'll see the line move to face down over here and then you select a new audio reactive patch to be over there um, and the only reason we're not seeing that right now is because i think the one i select needs sound to initialize so i'm just going to play um, this audio file that I have on my computer and we'll see that in action.
cool. So that was a quick look at it working and you could see it was working as soon as the audio started playing, both of these started responding. And we also had this cool little cross fade uh, bar right here to fade between both visuals or you know leave it in the middle and show both that's really cool I like to do that um, Another useful feature right here is our blackout bar just in case you need to black out the visuals and bring them back in You've got that option for you right there as well, which is super super sick And that's pretty much it that is like the absolute basic of running this patch um, If you've got visuals that you like in their design and you're ready to go all you got to do is you know do that um, pretty easy, but there's a few more things in here that I included uh, that I thought would be useful um, and they're fun to play with and uh, We're gonna just real fast break those down as well. So you see this arc ARC off button in the middle that stands for audio reactive crossfade It basically is my attempt to automate audio reacting the crossfade Via audio reaction. So if you click that on you then have these options to choose from which is right to left or left to right uh, vice versa. This here is like your slide resistance, these first two val values. So if you're going left to right, this would be, you know, smoothness going back to the left, and this would be resistance going towards the right. And if you click right to left, it's going to flip it. Uh, so, you know, the resistance becomes the smoothness for the opposite direction, so on and so forth. And this third value is the multiplier. So if you feel like you're, you know, you've got this turned on, you're playing a thing, but it's not going all the way to the other end, um, and you want it to, you can turn this multiplier value up to help it get over there. And with those smoothing values, you know, it should create a pretty cool look for you if you want to automate that feature. Um, and then you could click it to turn it back off and it's going to ignore that and then you could set the crossfade wherever you want it again. Um, super, super cool. Uh, let's turn it on. Let's just play something. And... Another uh, feature that we could talk about is um, if you click on the message box that displays the file name, it's going to open the uh, sub patch to see the presentation mode setting that you have for that patch. If you have a bunch of extra settings in your max patch that are in the presentation mode display like I have here, like mic sensitivity or something, then you could click on the message box to open that and set those settings if you need to. Same thing on this side. You could click that and it's going to open it and show that to you so you can change these settings. The one thing with that is make sure that you have your max patch that is the audio reactive visual set to open in presentation mode and you have all those features that you need to change in presentation mode. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to see them. It's gonna like only show a portion of the patch and you, you're not gonna be able to work with that. It's not gonna work. So make sure to just set open to presentation mode. Pretty easy to remember, um, takes two seconds uh, to do. So just have that in mind. The absolute last feature right here, you see it says video plane. We are by default in video plane mode. Um, but if you click it, we open the new JITGL mesh wrap feature. You can then click the UI button and by default it says hidden. Um, but if you click it so it's visible, you can select this and drag these points around. Uh, thank you to Federico for making this amazing max stuff uh, is the GOAT. And once you have that, you know, set up, so if you need to do projection mapping or you just want to use it to create even weirder looking visuals, that's a feature for you. You can turn it off and there you go. Um, and everything still works the same way. You can still load in whatever patch you need to and show that here. And everything should be all nice and smooth for you. Just like that. And that is pretty much it. So hopefully you guys see the use in this and this lets you also uh, be a Max MSP VJ if you've got a bunch of audio reactive visuals designed that you want to run in a show or something. And if there are any questions, please ask me those. If 
you guys download this and it's not working, please, please let me know about that. I want to fix all the bugs that anybody can find and release an updated version later. Also, if you have any feature suggestions, I'm definitely open to hear that as well. Uh, I would love to be able, I would love to add more things that are useful to everybody. If you are watching this video and you're not on my Patreon, I'm sorry. This is only available to my Patreon subscribers. So go subscribe over on my Patreon to download this and just get in on, on that extra action. Thank you so much for your support and for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video.